How are you doing, Luann? Oh my gosh, doing so well. Very excited. Hey, to be we had we had some news in uh, in South Carolina this past week. What? I, I got to shine a light on it, and I got to tip my hat, you know, to all of the gritty, just tough as nails people up in Myrtle Beach. Y'all don't realize how tough and and, and gritty you guys are, you know. The Chinese spy balloon <laughs> was floating over Montana. And it was too dangerous, right? Like, don't don't shoot it down. It could be too dangerous. Don't shoot it down over Montana. And then it just slowly drifted across Middle America, and when it was in the the mid the Mid East, there it was like, oh no, there it could be of a danger to the people underneath it. So we wouldn't dare shoot it down in the middle of nowhere because there might be someone who might get hit by the the debris. A horse, I don't know. Soon as the thing floats over Myrtle Beach, let her rip. <laughs> <laughs> Ready, fire, aim. It's over Myrtle Beach. To heck with all the people out on the putt-putt mini golf courses oh. and on the golf course and elbow deep in a buffet. They'll fend for themselves. They're tough as nails. <laughs> and I'm saying this kiddingly, of course, but I, I God, I love you folks up there in Myrtle Beach. You know, um, I was begging and pleading to my wife to move to – the South Grand Strand, like Pauly's Island, Litchfield yeah. Beach area. Yeah. I love it in Myrtle Beach. I don't belong in Charleston. Like, Charleston <laughs> is too hoity-toity. There's too many darn yuppies here. But every now and again, I catch a glimpse of myself in a mirror. I'm like, who's this yuppie over there? Oh, that's me. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I love Myrtle Beach. Um, but, my God, the government did you dirty just deciding to, you know, abstain from shooting down the Chinese spy balloon as it drifted across our entire country until it went right over Surfside Beach. All right, let her rip. And, of course, the government's excuse is like, oh, well, you know, it's out to sea now. And I'll spare you (sighs) all the hot takes there, right? Because Lord knows there's people more eloquent than me to talk about um, the proper protocols of how to handle Chinese spy balloons. Uh, and I'll stay in my lane, as many people tell me to. You know, all of the hate mail I receive from liberals who listen to long-format talk radio, which, why on earth are you listening to long-format talk radio if you vote with your left hand and see the world through that view? Um, but anyways, I digress. I'll stay in my lane and talk about things I know a really lot about, and that is retirement planning. That is giving people confidence to put their two-week notice in and no longer appear at your job. And also, for all of you folks who've already put your two-week notice in, or God forbid you were laid off, um, give you a little bit more confidence to spend money on a month-by-month basis so you can check items off your bucket list and you can live a little bit more abundantly, knowing darn well that you're not going to have to welcome people to Walmart, you're not going to have to eat cat food, And you're also not going to be the wealthiest person in the cemetery pushing up daisies. I believe that is the biggest concern or the biggest thing that's happening in the modern retirement world, the pensionless world, the 401k world, especially to God-fearing, flag-waving conservative people. Conservative people read the newspaper they follow the news wire. They use their head. They use that thing in between their two ears to like make thoughtful decisions. And they have a mechanism within their brain that tells them to like protect themselves in case of an emergency. And they want to make sure their kids don't act foolish. And it's called risk management, right? It's called being an adult. And God-fearing, flag-waving conservative people have what I call a healthy level of paranoia, which lends itself to delaying instant gratification for future reward, and then what happens is they turn 60 or 70. And you start to go, wait a second here. What's future reward when I'm 80 or 90? When, when who knows, God doesn't give you your 80s and 90s for one, but you might not have the health or energy to begin enjoying your money and spending it to create experiences, because ultimately at the end of our days, it's not about how much money you have in a Roth IRA. It's not about uh, you know how much stock you've accumulated in a blue chip name or a dividend payer. It's all about what you leave behind. And what you leave behind is not your money. It's your legacy. It's the experiences that you've created with your loved ones. 
And money, hate to break it to you, you know, everyone's all these people talking about how money is the root of all evil. Money helps us create experiences in a more abundant, exaggerated way. And if you say to me, well, Adam, I don't like money. I like just going for picnics and eating ramen noodles with my sweetheart. Well, well, then give your money to a darn church or a charity. Lord knows someone needs your money out there, and you could be blessing someone and helping someone, giving someone a hand up who, who so much deserves it. But just do me a favor. Don't give it to the federal government because they don't deserve it, and Lord knows they don't need a hand up. Because if you give them a hand up, they're like uh, giving your hand up to a big fat person who like just pulls you down into the quicksand along with them. You know, <laughs> imagine that. Yeah. Imagine if there was a big fat person in the in a quicksand or, you know, in a puddle or something, and you try to give them a hand up, and then they just throw all their weight into that hand and hoist you in there too. Uh, I'd be so mad. Yeah, you know, radio is the theater of the mind, <laughs> Luann, and I just really painted a wonderful picture. <laughs> Big obese person in quicksand. I thought growing up, quicksand was going to be a bigger part of my life. Same here. It right? was It was on every in every movie, TV show, everything. Yeah, Gilligan's Island. They just kept uh, falling uh, into quicksand. You know, and like awful. I thought, when, when's my opportunity to fall into oh, quicksand? So scary. <laughs> it's scary, but at the same time, I hope in one time in my life, I get put in a little uh, bit of quicksand because uh, no. I feel like I've learned how to get out of yeah, it. You're not supposed you. to wiggle around. You know, you're supposed to just kind of. Find a vine to pull yourself out of it. Oh, my. What if there's no vine? I also thought the Bermuda Triangle was going to have a bigger impact on my life, too. You know, <laughs> I thought I might go missing in there, but <sighs> so many things that were taught. Yes. Okay, I okay. guess I should talk about things I actually know about. Okay. Let, let me start the show like this. First and foremost, I got to give my Billy Mays. So I wrote the first and only book ever penned about retiring in the great state of South Carolina. We give the thing away for free. And for all of my friends down in Georgia, up north in North Carolina, out west in Tennessee, throughout the whole nation, we wrote a book for you too. And we give it away as part of our Retire Y'all planning kit. Free book. Extra, extra. Read all about it. All you need to do is call my office up or go to our website. You get a free book in the mail. Either Retire Y'all, Your Guide to Retiring in the State of South Carolina, or The Power of a Plan, Your Politically Incorrect Guide to a Worry-Free Retirement. 843-300-1182. 843-300-1182. Or you can check us out online at retireyall.com. Again, retireyall.com. Y'all, for all my Yankee brethren, is spelled Y-A-L-L, retire, Y-A-L-L.com. Also for all my Yankee brethren, and I call you brethren because I am a damn Yankee myself. Hate to admit it, but it's true. Stop weaving in and out of traffic. Take your darn hand off your horn. You're in South Carolina now. There is no reason for you to ever honk your horn unless, like, someone's about to hit you and you want to just wake them up. But when you're at a stop sign and someone doesn't move a little quick enough for you, there's no reason to touch your horn. You should, in fact, you should get it in, like just uninstalled. Get your horn out of your car. If you have a ugly yellow license plate, meaning you're from New Jersey or New York, you should not have a horn in your car, at least for a year when you move to South Carolina. This should be a rule at the DMV. They should uninstall your horn and just go, all right, guys, you don't need this anymore. Slow down. Take a pill for your northern aggression. You don't need to be honking your horn at people. And for all of those that are American by birth but southern by the grace of God, thank you for letting all these darn Yankees move into your backyard and not pitching a complete fit. Because if it were the other way, if all of these, um, you know, Bubba-speaking, sweet tea-drinking, collard green eaten people from the south decided to invade New York and New Jersey... Y'all would get your unions together to get them out. So thank you for letting us invade your hometown. And, and of course, if anyone's offended, right, because I always get, I cannot believe you said that about people from the South, Adam. I married a Southern Belle, and I am a darn Yankee, and we've had three kids, soon to be four, and these children, these precious gifts from God, are half Southern, half Yankee. Do you believe that, Luann? <laughs> I do. So I'm, in, in essence, I'm making fun yeah. of them at the same time. Oh. <laughs> All right, I digress. Let's talk about something I know about. Hey, I was thrilled, thrilled. Do I go into that? I'm going to go into that after the break. Life insurance, how much I hate it, 
uh, how I think it's almost like a malicious financial instrument that quote-unquote financial advisors hawk on the general public. But let me first unpack this jobs report that came out. We had a jobs number come in at the beginning of February that said we added 517,000 jobs in the month of January. And unemployment hit a 53-year low. Economists thought that that jobs number was only going to be like 200,000. So we had a jobs number that has like literally 150% more than what analysts anticipated. Almost seems too good to be true, doesn't it, Luann? Yeah, it does. Because it is. <laughs> oh. It is too good to be true. <laughs> and you already see our great president doing a victory lap. Look at how many jobs I created. As Jill kind of slowly like, here, honey, you're talking to yourself again. Come on over here. Let's take our pills and go to bed. So we have this blistering jobs number all the while inflation is cooling off. How does that work? Typically, when jobs numbers are strong, employers need to pay their employees more, and those employees buy more stuff, and then companies need to increase the price of their goods and services in order to justify paying their employees more, and we have inflation with strong jobs data. Figures don't lie, but liars Sure can figure. (laughs) Let me unpack this number for you real quickly. So anytime the government or the Bureau of Labor Statistics releases a jobs report, there's something cooked into that number. It is called a seasonal adjustment metric. And that seasonal adjustment, what it does is they'll add jobs based on the seasonality of when they're reading the the, the figures or the report, right? Because naturally, there's kind of a a cycle of jobs based off of the weather, harvest seasons, holidays, uh, school. You know, if a bunch of people are out of school on summer break, there'll be less jobs. And in the month of January, the Bureau of Labor Statistics added 3 million jobs via the seasonal adjustment. So literally, January 1 came along. Bureau of Labor Statistics Statistics says, oh, well, January is kind of a tough month for jobs because it's cold out and less people will be employed, even though we just had like one of the warmest Januaries ever on record. And not in South Carolina, but nationally. Um, And they add 3 million jobs to the number right off off the (laughs) get-go. Then the month comes to a close, and they go, oh, well, you know, we added 517,000 jobs. Look how smart we are. When in reality, we lost 2.5 million jobs. Only in Washington, D.C. can the economy lose 2.5 million jobs, and you can somehow finagle the numbers. Liars sure can figure. Figures don't lie. And somehow deduce that we gained 500,000 jobs. This BLS jobs report number is as useful as teats on a bull. It should be called the BS jobs report number. In fact, last January, the seasonal adjustment in jobs in January is only 2.2 million. Why on earth would they add 3 million jobs to the jobs report number this year when COVID's gone away, right? Joe Biden just told us that COVID went away. Wonderful. That means companies should be employing like crazy. And, and, um, you know, the economy has never been stronger. If you read Joe Biden's tweets, you you, you see like, oh my gosh, like, thank God this, this, this hero came out of nowhere. Well, he was here for 50 years, but he came out of nowhere and he's been the, like the guiding light of a strong American jobs market and economy once again. So this number is so artificially manipulated, and there's a whole show I can do about 
how many other figures are artificially manipulated. Heck, the unemployment rate. You know how many people that they just basically booted out of the unemployment rate because they said, oh, this person's 60 years old. They're not looking for a job anymore. And they automatically get shifted to like the workforce participation number or how many people are unemployed right or underemployed right now? How many uh, people who have uh, riddled with student loan debt or driving Uber or delivering food to people's front door via a uh, DoorDash? Like these jobs numbers are so manipulated. Anyone on the street worth their weight in salt does not take them seriously anymore. And it is a sad day in America when we were once the glistening, the glistening castle on a hill. We were the, the envy of all other capital markets throughout the world because America was truthful and honest. And our data came across the newswire in a way, win, lose, or draw, that analysts and economists can chew on and digest and make thoughtful decisions. Now our data comes across the newswire, and Joe Biden's doing a victory lap, opening up bottles of champagne, saying he created 500,000 jobs, when in reality, the economy lost 2.5 million jobs. Unreal stuff, folks. You heard it here first. Joe Biden is not a genius. You think I'm the first person who shined a light on that? <laughs> Maybe. Am I the first person in talk radio who thinks Joe Biden is a dimwit? I think I got a future in this business, Luann. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to get my number out. On the other side of the break, we're going to talk about how malicious I believe life insurance is. Bank on yourself, infinite banking, be your own bank. Finally, I'm not the only one. A couple companies have come out and said, if any of our agents even say these words, we will flush you out of the business. And I'm like, kudos, tip my hat, round of applause. Mm. Finally, this industry is like self-regulating a little bit and flushing the bad actors out of the industry. Um, but first and foremost, I believe you should get your financial advice from people who have a similar worldview. That's why I share my politics. That's why I talk about my faith. That's why I talk about my family and I share every every time the time I walked around my office with my fly down all day long. <laughs> I didn't need to share that on the radio. I chose to share that on the radio just to let you know that I make stupid mistakes as well too. And also to let you know that no one in my office had the gall to approach me and say, "Hey Adam, are you selling hot dogs?" You think that was good for radio? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So uh, we share stories like that because um, I believe that you should get your financial advice from people who are authentic, people who sh see the world through the same lens as you. And I also think you should get your financial advice from the best. Now, I realize, or I think I'm the best, because my mother told me, and my mother would never lie to me. And my mother would tell me if my fly was down. My mother finds flaw in me <laughs> like no one else. I don't know how she does it sometimes. I could be on top of the world and, you know, everyone's like asking for autographs. And there's my mom just waiting on the side of the stage Adam, to zip up. <laughs> insult me, right? God love her. God love my mom. It's because she know, loves she you is, so much. She is a Spartan mother. She will never let my head grow big. But she told me. She told me that we're the absolute best in all of South Carolina at giving people confidence to put their two-week notice in, giving people confidence to spend their money. And this little rinky-dink radio show started as a 15-minute drive-time interview, and I parlayed that into a little one-hour show on the AM dial, and then I parlayed that into a little FM show, and then we're up in Myrtle Beach, and then we're down in Savannah, and then we're up in Columbia, then we're up in Greenville. Now, my high-pitched Yankee voice can be heard. I don't think there's anyone in all of South Carolina who has more radio airtime, who has a bigger footprint on long format talk radio than me. Much to the liberal chagrin. Much to many people who've written me hate mail chagrin. I'm sorry. You have to deal with me. I'm only 40. I ain't going anywhere either. So if you love weekend talk radio, but you hate me, I'm sorry, South Carolina. I ain't going anywhere. I have no hobbies. I have no friends. 
Like, it ain't about money anymore. It's all about just giving good information out, and I like to think that my firm does that. Come plan with us, and the way you plan with us, the way you kick our tires is you call my office up, 843-300-1182, 843-300-1182, or you get our book simply by visiting our website. Go to retireyall.com. Again, retireyall.com. All you need to do is go to that website, and request our Retire Y'all planning kit. And for all my friends here in South Carolina, I wrote the first and only book ever penned about retiring in the great state of South Carolina. We give the thing away for free. Free book, extra, extra, 843-300-1182, 843-300-1182, or go to our website, retireyall.com. Again, retireyall.com. And for all my friends out in Tennessee and Georgia, North Carolina, wrote a book for you, too. It's called The Power of a Plan, Your Politically Incorrect Guide to a Worry-Free Retirement. We have offices in all of those places. And I would just ask you, I know darn well that every person who requests my book is not going to turn into a client overnight. Trust is earned. You're not going to hear a Billy Mays sales pitch on the radio and just go, all right, I've heard enough. I'll give this guy my life savings. I get it. We got to earn it. And how do we earn it is we walk you through a planning process that in my, my belief in my heart of hearts is better than anyone else out there. Because our advisors know about tax code. In fact, I think our advisors know more about tax code than a lot of people signing tax returns. Our advisors know about how health insurance gets melded into a plan. If you're under age 65, how do you game Obamacare? If you're under age 65 and you make too much income, how do these like uh, MediShare and Liberty Health Share, how do that stuff work? What about short-term health insurance? After we turn age 65, how much does Medicare cover? Do I get a Medicare Advantage plan? Do I get a Medicare supplement? What about long-term care insurance? Because, of course, Medicare ain't going to cover us if we lose our marbles and we find ourselves in a care facility. How do I take this big old pile of money and ensure it lasts all my life? And at the end of my days, when I take my last breath, I'm going to make sure it gets passed on to my children and my children's children in the most tax-efficient way. We can do all that for you, and it starts like this. It starts with a 15-minute initial phone call. You don't need to cross a bridge. You don't need to fight beach traffic. You don't need to go out on the busy streets of uh, South Carolina and void all the yellow license plates, all the Yankees weaving in and out of traffic, laying on their horn like I talked about earlier. All you need to do is call our office up or visit our website, get our free book in the mail, and schedule 15 minutes out of your very busy life. 843-300-1182, 843-300-1182, or check us out online, retireyall.com. Again, retireyall.com. My my office will send you a book, and here's what they're going to say. Would you like to begin our little planning process? And that entails 15 minutes. You will spend 15 minutes on the phone with an Indian call center getting bounced around only for that call to be lost. That happens to me about once a week. Here, let me transfer you to our customer service department. Oh, I understand. We need to transfer you to our customer escalation service department. <laughs> oh, let me transfer you to over, and everyone's got like a like a, a name like as American as apple pie, but you know darn well you're just getting bounced around an Indian call center. And then all of a sudden, click, you just get disconnected, and you just wasted 45 minutes of your life that you'll never get back. How's that for customer service? How If you're doing business with a company – like that, and you just take it on the chin day in and day out, you know, shame on you. Call yourself a God-fearing, flag-waving patriot while you support the business that, you know, doesn't create American jobs, outsources jobs, and gives you crap customer service. Unacceptable. That's what I've been doing in 2023, Luann. Like, our lobby no longer has Coca-Cola and Starbucks products in it. Aw. Which is a real challenge because now I'm asking people to drink Royal Crown soda. (laughs) (laughs) And people are like, what's going on here, man? Can I just get a Coke? Can we just cheat a little bit? (laughs) No, we can't. We cannot. We are going to support companies that stay out of the political and social activist realm and just focus on producing wonderful products and services that delight their customers and grow a customer base. I'm crazy. I'm a radical. I'm doing a TV interview later on today, and um, it's on One America Network. Mm-hmm. And f- forgive me, I didn't know what One America Network is. I guess a lot of people watch it. Oh. Um, but I Googled it, and it was like far-right 
conservative TV channel for Trump supporters. Mm. And I was like, wait a second. Is this where I belong? And then I go, <laughs> yes, this is exactly where I belong. <laughs> These are my people. Like, finally, I'm on TV talking to them. <laughs> um, all right. I guess I got to take a break. Sit here and rant for eh, like 25 minutes. Half the show has been taken up by my high-pitched Yankee voice. Get our book. Put together a living, breathing, written retirement plan, a measuring stick that you can use for the rest of your life. I promise, whether you work with us or you work with your brother-in-law or your golfing buddy or you do things on your own, you go through our planning process, you will walk away with a couple little nuggets of wisdom that will have you looking at your money in a completely different light. And when we save people money, when we show shine a light on strategies that people can utilize, we're not talking about 20% off your oil change. Like, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars potentially that you could be saving in taxes or leaving behind your heirs via a larger legacy with good estate planning techniques. Come plan with us. 843-300-1182. 843 300 Check us out online, retireyall.com. Again, retireyall.com. Retire y'all with Adam Karen. We'll be right back. Adam, let's talk more about life insurance. I know you've said you hate it. I do hate life insurance. Life insurance should be called death insurance because the only way (laughs) you win is when you die. To die. (laughs) Let me preface this. This is coming from someone who literally in the last month just put $5 million of term life insurance in force on myself, right? And I want to have that on radio because I want it to live in the ether because if you read a report about a husband falling off a cliff or, <laughs> you know, dying in his Some, sleep something or... Something suspect. Yeah, I want everyone to look long and hard at Anna Claire <laughs> and, like, figure out where Stop. she was and look at her text message thread. <laughs> I already let it know I already let it be known that I am worth significantly more to her alive than dead. <laughs> okay, good. But good. I got five million dollars of life insurance just put on my on myself in the last month and I wow. hate life insurance. Mm-hmm. Now what kind of life insurance did I buy? I bought term insurance, the cheapest insurance you could possibly buy. Now, where I don't like life insurance is through some of the greasy, slimy sales techniques that agents employ, I was going to call them financial advisors, but they're not advisors. They're life insurance salespeople. The things that they employ to get people to buy this stuff. Some of you might have heard of a, of a financial account called bank on yourself, right? Or infinite banking or be your own bank. Or I've also heard it referred to as like the presidential plan or the 44090 plan. Like all of this really shrewd marketing that paints a picture of life insurance being this wonderful growth chassis that uh, if it's index universal life, for instance, if the market goes down, you'll never lose any money. But if the market goes up, you'll participate in a portion of the market's upside. And our policies allow you to take a tax-free loan so you can be your own bank. You want to know how all the rich people on Jekyll Island Got rich all those years back when they created the Federal Reserve. It's by banking on yourself. Buy this life insurance policy. Have you all heard the jig? Have you heard the song and dance? Mm -hmm. All of this are shrewd, downright malicious. Shrewd would outline it being actually like 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 a wise, savvy way to do it. Malicious ways to get people to buy life insurance. Now, why am I so sour on it? Here's why I'm sour on it. Typically, when individuals buy these types of life insurance policies, the agent will present an illustration. And that illustration almost undoubtedly uses overly optimistic inputs that paint a rosy picture that is never, ever, ever accomplished. They pretend that that individual is going to make 6 7 8% on their money year in and year out like clockwork consistently with no down years. That illustration pretends that the cost of insurance never goes up. It talks about a loan rate that uh, remains level, similar to where it was when interest rates were at 
next to zero. So what happens is people buy these policies, and unfortunately, they put money into them for year after year after year, thinking that they're making a smart, wise financial decision with their money. And unfortunately, the way these policies are designed, you don't know they stink until you've been in them for like five to ten years. And five years seems like just a few trips around the sun, but it's like an eternity when it comes to financial planning, right? Because we only have, I don't know, 20 to 40 years of wealth accumulation. And you're fueling this life insurance policy all the while your money is not growing nearly as prosperous as that initial illustration illustrated the cost of insurance for the policy because it's a life insurance policy you have to pay for your cost keeps increasing year after year after year most of the accounts have very stiff surrender penalties and most of the accounts are illustrated in a way where hey if you keep the money in there for 15 years then you can start taking tax-free loans those tax-free loans when you actually see the performance of the policy are not nearly as good as what the illustration laid out. And the whole, you know, cost benefit, risk reward proposition that was sold to you by that agent doesn't materialize even half as much as they laid out to you. And I show up five years into the policy, seven years into the policy, and I go, hey, the market, with exception of last year, the market has been pretty darn good these last 10 years, right? So your policy should be overperforming the illustration that was presented to you. Ask for an illustration from the life insurance company as sold. So the policy illustration that they handed to you the day they bought it. And then fast forward to the year in which you're in and look at what your cash value is. Look at what the death benefit value is. And tell me if those numbers are even in the same zip code. My guess is they are not. Your numbers are substantially lower than what that agent illustrated. And your plan is not going to work like they said it was going to work. In fact, it is a terrible place to park money. Terrible place for retirement income purposes. And I'm tickled that some of the insurance companies are coming out and going, yeah, guys, the whole bank on yourself thing, infinite banking, be your old bank, cool it. You're, 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 you know, you're promising, you're telling people pretty little lies and I don't want to be associated with it anymore. If you have one of these policies, it's not as though there's no hope for you. But the sooner you nip it in the bud, as soon as you cut bait on this thing, and you stop pretending it's going to materialize like this overly optimistic picture that they presented to you. You know, by the way, the commissions people make when they put money into these things, like, disgusting. How on earth is your money supposed to grow when people are collecting commission checks that are five figures, six figures in many cases? If you've got one of these policies and you want us to audit it, you want us to take a look at it, agnostically, I could promise you this. This is one thing that I pride my company on. Um, treat people the way you'd want to be treated. I've never gone to a timeshare sales pitch because I'm uncomfortable and I would probably just buy one because <laughs> I don't want to make the person feel bad, right? So I would not buy a timeshare in case, you know, anyone is concerned there. I just wouldn't go to the presentation. Mm -hmm. When our advisors sit with you, we're not going to twist your arm or use sales techniques. We're going to walk you through a planning process that you walk out of the room going, whoa, that was better. That was better than anything I went through. We don't want people to hire us because we guilted them. We don't want people to hire us because we used a bunch of sales techniques and scared them into making a, good, a bad business decision. We want people to hire us because they see the value that we provide. They bear witness to the planning experience. They go, man, that's better. That's better. That's better than what I'm dealing with right now. We want people to walk in our lobby and just kind of go, okay, you know, these people hold themselves to a standard. 
Because right now, the bar right now throughout humanity is like three rungs below mediocre. We're having a limbo contest as a society on who could be the most slovenly and who can care about customers least and least, if that's the right way to say it. Well, our company holds the bar higher because that's how I was raised. That's how I'd want to be treated. That's how I'd want my parents to be treated. So come test drive us. Come kick our tires. See if what we're doing here is a hair different. Come plan with us. Get our Retire Y'all planning kit. We give the thing away for free. In that kit is my book. It's called Retire Y'all, Your Guide to Retiring in the State of South Carolina. We give the thing away for free. Or if you're up in Georgia, North Carolina, wrote a book for you too. It's called The Power of a Plan, Your Politically Incorrect Guide to a Worry-Free Retirement. Come plan with us. 843-300-1182. 843 843- 31182 or you can check us out online at retireyall.com again retireyall.com on the other side of this break Luann, I want to talk about this Vanguard report one of the things that one of the only things that I read each and every year religiously uh, and they just released a new one um, and I got to unpack it on the air so um, come plan with us guys and that's not all we'll be right back with the rest of our show this is retire y'all radio with Adam Curran Yeah, there's two things I read every year. One is Warren Buffett's white paper, and the other thing I read is Vanguard's uh, economic and investment forecast. Uh, I think they've been very, very accurate in years past, so I just, anytime I see this thing drop, I pick it up and I read it right away. Uh, So I want to unpack it. Now, before I do that, though, there were 12 analysts uh, at the end of 2021, and they made S&P 500 index price forecasts. So these are 12 of the most talented analysts that have at their fingertips information, leading, lagging, economic data that we would all dream of, supercomputers, what have you. And these 12 analysts took their best crack at where they saw the S&P 500 finishing at the end of 2022. And the consensus, meaning the average of all of them, missed by 25%. Like, this isn't weatherman type stuff, right? Like 25% chance of rain is just like a hedging technique that the weathermen use in order to, like, hey, it rained. Well, I told you there was a 25% chance. Being off 25% on where you think capital markets is headed is like, Taking an airplane and saying you're flying to Washington, the state, and you wind up in Arizona. Like, we're off a long way. 25%. And the lowest prediction, right? So the person who had, like, thought the S&P 500 was actually going to go down in value was off by 15%. The highest prediction was off by darn near 40%. What does this tell you? Short-term stock market predictions are absolutely useless. So if you've got a drinking buddy who likes to claim that they had it all figured out before all this happened and blah, 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 like, okay, have another one. Um, Or I got a better idea. Whatever he tells you to invest in, buy the opposite of it. So if he says buy Apple, short Apple. If he says buy consumer discretionary, buy consumer staples. And if he says buy growth stocks, buy dividend stocks. Some of you right now are like, well, Adam, what do you want to invest in? Because I'll do that very same thing to you. I wouldn't fault you for being a contrarian. But let's unpack Vanguard's economic forecast, okay? So last year, Vanguard released one of the most bearish economic forecasts ever. They said that equities in the United States of America, stocks, would only grow to the tune of 2 to 4%. The most bearish forecast Vanguard has ever released. And Vanguard, mind you, is a permable. Like, the mantra of Vanguard is buy low-cost index funds, hang on for dear life, the market always goes up. And here they are coming out and saying, well, stocks are only going to go up 2 to 4%. All the while, I could buy a treasury or a fixed annuity that pays me 45 to 5% risk-free. So they just came out. In 2023, now mind you, this is when the market's already dropped 20%, and they came out with a slightly more bullish 
forecast. Now, this is an annualized rate of return projection for the next 10 years. They anticipate U.S. stocks will only grow 47 to 6.7% per year. In fact, they see growth stocks. This is your Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, you know, the FANG stocks. Mm -hmm. They see those stocks only growing 3 to 5% per year. Value stocks, dividend producers, this is why I'm so bullish on dividends, 4.7 to 6.7. So when I look at those numbers as a retirement planner, and if I just take them at face value, and mind you, Charles Schwab, I believe Fidelity, J.P. Morgan have all come out with similarly bearish predictions on U.S. stock markets. Pretty much what they're telling us is this. You've grown accustomed to the S&P 500 growing 8, 9, 10% per year over the last few decades. Going forward, this next decade will not be nearly as prosperous because inflation, the Federal Reserve's had to increase interest rates, the risk-free rate is now 4 or 5% per year. So as a retirement planner, I can't in good conscience look someone on the other side of a table and go, hey, yeah, um, the stock market is going to give us about 4 to 6%. So we're going to just kind of hang on to our seats and put it all in the stock market and cross our fingers and hope for the best. Hope for the 6 instead of the 4 when I have a bird in my hand and financial instruments at my disposal that guarantee people three-year fixed account, 5.1% per year, five-year fixed account, 5.4% per year, linked accounts with caps higher than I've ever seen in my entire career, where you backtest them, you're averaging 6 7% per year, risk-free, and no, I'm not talking about some bank-on-yourself life insurance technique. I, I think we all saw in the last segment there that I'm not a fan of that. And no, I'm not talking about hard money lending or some private REIT that you lock your money up and can never get the heck out of. I'm talking about risk-free instruments that have legal reserve systems backing them up. Heck, we can get you a six-month CD with FDIC insurance that'll pay 4.5%. We can get one-year treasuries around five, uh, 4.8%. Fixed annuities, three-year fixed annuities, 5.1%. Five years, 54 Folks, why on earth would you take stock market risk when Vanguard's out here saying, hey, why don't you just put it all in the stock market and make 5 to 6% per year when you can get risk-free? Now, I'm not saying with everything, guys. My firm manages hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in the stock market. We love the stock market. American capital markets are still the place to be over the long haul. But if you're on retirement's doorstep, right now would be a wonderful time to take some of your risk off the table and put it in things that are going to be very predictable and secure. Tortoise in the hair, I want you to own some tortoises. Come plan with us. If that resonates with you, call my company up. Call my little American dream up. Get our free book in the mail. I have a whole chapter on my book on investments. Our, our book comes as part of our Retire Y'all planning kit. I wrote the first and only book ever penned about retiring in the great state of South Carolina. We cover Social Security and taxes and real estate and investments and income planning. How to live the optimal, perfect South Carolina retirement. And then if you're not in South Carolina, I wrote a book for you too. It's called The Power of a Plan, Your Politically Incorrect Guide to a Worry-Free Retirement. Come plan with us, 843-300-1182, 843-300-1182, or you can check us out online at retireyall.com. Again, retireyall.com. Y'all, for all my Yankee brethren, is spelled Y-A-L-L, and for all of those that are American by birth but Southern by the grace of God, the Internet doesn't quite understand apostrophes. If there's anything I talked about on today's show that's of interest to you, reach out to my office. I'd be happy to send you this Vanguard piece. Or you could just go to uh, Google it, Vanguard Market uh, Forecast, and you'll probably find it that way. Ah, gosh, I got to get off social media, Luann. You know, because I'll, I'll be on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. And I'll be reading something. I'm like, wow, yeah. mm -hmm. like this guy's really, really smart. And 
maybe I should start eating bark and <laughs> you know not using deodorant with aluminum in it and and drinking med co- med flavored coffee. I am no, drinking mushroom, mushroom coffee mushroom. right now as we speak. So <laughs> if I start hallucinating, uh, you could join my class action lawsuit against this company. Um, but no, I, I watch this stuff on on social media and I'm like, boy, these people are like pretty bright. And then I'll see someone talking about a topic that I'm really bright in, and I go, wow, these people are all idiots. They just (laughs) use long words. You know, these over-educated, college-educated people just rifting on Twitter about their random musings throughout the day, and, and then they start, like, talking about something that I'm just like, no. Know what works, guys? Your snotty little nephew who hates Trump and wanted to lecture you about income inequality at the Thanksgiving dinner table (laughs) who has no money and, uh, you know, uses and tries to belittle you through their eloquent wordsmithing and always, oh, here's the other thing they do. They always, like, play like they're dumb. Like, oh, I don't even know what woke means. I'm a moderate. (laughs) You ever hear that? A liberal, like... Yeah. No, I'm just more of a moderate. Uh-huh. Hmm. You know, who wants to admit they're a liberal right now? I mean, honestly. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm a moderate. This is not me. I, I'm, I'm in the middle here. <laughs> um, even though, like, every single thing you stand for is uh, a- aligned with the, the liberal uh, agenda. You know what works? Going to work every day, pedaling uphill putting 5 to 10% into your 401k, buying a starter house you can afford, aggressively paying down the mortgage, moving into a slightly nicer neighborhood if you so choose to do that, putting a little money away for the kids' college fund so they could get brainwashed by liberal academia, staying married to your high school sweetheart, there I said it, Being a real man, standing up for principles and values, driving cars till the wheels fall off, clipping coupons, periodically buying generic ketchup, not for your whole life, but when you're broke. You know, good old-fashioned conservative American principles. That's what works. All the millionaires who walk into my office, whether they be first-generation Americans whether they be born on third base. Funny thing about people who are born on third base and think they hit a triple, a lot of them blow through all their money. But there are people who inherit money, who treat that money with the reverence and respect that it deserves, and they utilize it to change their family tree tenfold. But it's the people who do things the old-fashioned way. Those are the people I want to fight for. Those are the people this firm represents. Those are the people who work at this firm. Because if you see the world through a different lens, you won't last a month here. So if you want to go through a planning process that I believe in my heart of hearts the best and work with individuals like that, call our office up, 843-300-1182. Get our free book in the mail. Retire, y'all, your guide to retiring in the state of South Carolina, 843-300-1182. Go to retireyall.com. Again, retireyall.com. God bless America. God bless South Carolina and Georgia and North Carolina and Tennessee, too. Thank you so much for listening to my little rinky-dink American dream. You know, some of you might be going this little long-format talk radio show. This is all I've ever wanted to do with life. I wanted to help people with their money. I wanted to be on the radio, disseminating common-sense financial advice, and there you have it, another show in the books. Thank you so much for listening to my show.